Hey everyone, welcome back! I'm guessing that thumbnail is the reason you clicked. Yup, it's true, and I can prove it to you. No, this does not mean that you shouldn't use the Nadarook. In fact, it doesn't even mean you should switch off the Nadarook to Sinta. Confused? You should be. This video today will also clarify the idea that sometimes, the best gear is not always the best option for the user. The point to make is that your enjoyment in Warframe should be focused on what you enjoy, and not on what is always the best. There is also a difference between what you like and what is useful, though luckily today both bows are useful. That is also the entire point behind things I showcase. While I upload what I find interesting, I do not expect everyone to enjoy all of it. Rather, I only expect that you find something in there that suits your preferences. This also means I don't care if you play Inaros or not, but it also means I don't have to voice my approval of it either. So what is Sinta? It's that one Duviri weapon that was a massive pain to farm. You had to complete the Enigma puzzles for chances at it to drop on completion. That's why you saw all of those Ark Arbor puzzle videos floating around in the weeks after release. This is another perfect shot bow in similarity to Nataruk's function. An uncharged shot, a fully charged shot, and a perfect charged shot. Unlike the Nataruk, the perfect shot window is much tighter, representing only about 20% of the entire charge ring and has a bigger dead window towards the full charge. This makes it noticeably harder to string a perfect shot consistently than Nataruk. While I've recommended a Prime Shred plus Critical Delay on Nataruk, which resulted in plus 35% fire rate, which double dips on bows from mods to plus 70%, this cut the full draw time to 0.59 seconds. My comfort spot on Sinta instead has been with a rank 4 Vile Acceleration plus Critical Delay, resulting in a full draw time of 0.75 seconds. This is what I would recommend if a rank 5 Vile feels a tad too fast for you. Nataruk shoots ordinary arrows that can slash well with internal bleeding on quick shot due to force proc impact. However, the perfect shot launched a Pringle can of void energy head first into enemies, a respectably large hitbox, and had extreme damage. I even made a gas Nataruk in my original video to show how you could turn Nataruk into a proper AoE weapon and significantly expand its kill potential, since it already overkilled enemies in the main hitbox at base steel path. Sinta is the same, but also different. The quick shot and full charge shots are ordinary arrows, but do not force proc impact like Nataruk, meaning slash builds would need hunter munitions instead. The perfect shot also launches a larger hit, but when I mean a larger hit, I don't mean a Pringle scan. I mean take a truck trailer, turn it sideways, and launch it at them. It also force knocks down enemies. It has a similar hitbox size to the Lex and Karnon being impossibly large and wide, even more so than the visible projectile. The size of this hitbox affects how you will build this weapon, which I will show later. If you want a full review on the Nataruk instead though, I suggest checking out the video at the top right. The other difference is that the Sinta retains the 3 times headshot multiplier on its perfect shot, whereas the Nataruk doesn't. In fact, of all the plasma style weapons, Sinta and Queller are the only ones of the arch type that retain a proper headshot multiplier on the plasma styled shot. Because of this, a well placed Sinta shot straight up does 3 times damage scaling, but it does genuinely require effort. Plasmor archetypes are also incapable of activating the head crit bonus, which further doubles your total damage if you crit on top of the body part multiplier and crit multiplier of the weapon. This means while the Queller and Sinta can deal 6 times damage scaling before crit damage multipliers on a headshot, the Plasmors, Nataruk, Dread and Paris and Karnons, Catch Moon, Lex and Karnon, Korufel, Tenet Agendis, and any other Plasmor type weapons I've missed all only deal 1 times damage on headshot crits, even though they can activate headshot dependent abilities, arcanes, and mods. You can see this in practice, with the disparity in headshots with the Sinta Perfect Shot doing drastically higher damage than Nataruk almost 2.5 times, despite identical builds, whereas the body shot of Sinta's Perfect Shot doing drastically lower damage than the Nataruk. This means, assuming you're willing to aim, and it requires you to jump if not single target due to the massive hitbox, shooting the Sinta head level will always result in higher damage than the Nataruk. Even the full charge Sinta shot out damages Nataruk, and this is because the full charge Sinta has a base crit multiplier of 3 times instead of Nataruk's 2 times while still having 808 damage to Nataruk's 900. 
Well, Nataruk has base 50% crit on the full charge shot to Senta's 36. The first 100% crit is the most important, and Nataruk's CC advantage is devalued after the 100% threshold is crossed by both weapons. This is seen by Sinta still noticeably outdamaging Nataruk. But of course, none of this matters if you don't want to aim for hens, right? This is why many still prefer Nataruk. The ease of use, bigger perfect shot window, and big enough hitbox can still get the job done. But if you're a sweat, the Sinta will always perform better. It has higher headshot damage, bigger crowd clearing hitboxes, and a stronger full charge shot as well. Your preference between these two bows shows your desired effort versus reward expectations. The Sinta requires significantly more effort for slightly better rewards. If you're gonna use the Sinta regardless though, you will need builds. And that's what I offer, so let's take a look at what we got. There are only three Sinta builds to use, Viral 100 Munitions, Raw Corrosive, and Gas. Actually, there's only two. There isn't a reason to use Gas unless you want to, and I'll explain why when we get there. This is the first build with Hunter Munitions. You probably noticed Hunter Munitions isn't even on the build. The Sinta does not have enough space. You need to figure out if you're going to drop Galvanized Aptitude or the Bane. Both result in a massive damage loss with 2.4 times less damage if you drop the Bane on Bleeds, or roughly 2.6 times less damage if you drop Galv Aptitude, because Gun CO is multiplicative to final damage on every fire mode of the Sinta. The Sinta consistently does viral and heat on its shots, and this will add plus 160% total damage to afflicted enemies due to gun CO. If you're bringing a fire rate buff frame or arcane acceleration, then you consider dropping vile acceleration for 100 munitions. Just keep in mind that fire rate mods double dip fire rate on bows, whereas arcanes and abilities don't, meaning you will not be able to match the fire rate of vile acceleration with abilities and arcanes. Keep in mind that we are also using Critical Delay, meaning Sinta has a minus 40% fire rate without Vile Acceleration on a base 1.5 seconds draw time bow. Merciless, since it's slash procs and intended for endurance. We have zero base damage on the build, so unless you're using Vex Armor, Octavia's Amp, or another external base damage source, do not use a Longbow Sharp Shot, as there is no base damage for it to scale off of. At base steel path, a corrosive build is more than enough to rip everything apart. It's a Nataruk light in body shot damage and might need a follow up, but the headshots are absolutely lethal. Precision on a truck sized projectile, rewarding skill. We don't need to slot 100 munitions, meaning we're no longer slot starved and can simply replace the two elemental mons on the viral 100 munitions build with infected clip and stormbringer. Banes are only 1.55 times damage scaling on a raw corrosive build, but gun CO is still multiplicative. You can consider using Deadhead if you so wish since this shouldn't be too hard to activate. Stacks last 24 seconds, but remember that you have to intentionally try and hit hands. Because Sinta's hitbox is so big vertically that you're more likely to get body shots unless you intentionally aim slightly above the heads. We have a zero base damage on the build, so unless you're using Vex Armor, Octavia Zamp, or another external base damage source, do not use Longbow Sharp Shot, as there is no base damage for it to scale off of. The last build is Gas Sinta. It also only uses two flex slots, since the perfect shot is innate heat and only needs toxin to make gas. This leaves a free slot for hunting munitions so we can build up our initial weapon arcane stacks. And once that's up on a grouping build with ensnare, the overlapping gas clouds will massively outscale the slash to kill everything off. But this build does not make sense to use in Endurance for several reasons I will get into. Therefore, at base steel path, because you can still kill fodder outright on headshots, Deadhead is a solid option. Stacks last 24 seconds each, and you also have a juicy headshot multiplier bonus for the gas clouds to scale off of. But if you want to be super safe, Merciless is impossible to fail in building stacks due to gas cloud and slash dots. But keep in mind stacks fall off extremely quickly. So why don't I recommend Gas Sinta? Because the reasons to use gas do not benefit Sinta. Gas does not scale with elemental modding percent and does poorly against armor. Gas is also used to increase the hitbox of single target weapons, with Nataruk being a perfect example. Corrosive Nataruk requires 3 shots to clear this crown because the projectile is not big enough. Gas Nataruk can clear this crown in one shot because the gas clouds created do high enough damage to kill adjacent gunners even though they are untouched by the main shot. The gas clouds just kill them off. Corrosive Sinta can clear this crowd in 1-2 shots because the projectile is so fat it hits the entire crowd. 
Gas Sinta can also clear this crowd in one shot, but notice how Gas Sinta doesn't really save any shots, because the actual arrow was already big enough to hit the entire ensnared crowd without requiring the extended hitbox of Gas Clouds. Therefore, the enemies die simultaneously and instantly from the Gas Clouds, as they also took the direct damage hit. Therefore, at Base Steel Path, there is no benefit to using Gas Sinta over using Corrosive, since Corrosive can also at least kill ungrouped enemies reliably without even needing headshots, and in groups can hit all of them at once to kill them instantly. In Endurance, the Gas Clowns cannot overcome armor, making the Viral Hunting Munitions build better since at least Viral buffs the Slash procs. Therefore, Gas Sinta does not satisfy any niche, whereas Gas Nataruk did. Of course, if you're killing a Demolus, I would recommend using the full charge shot on Sinta, which does significantly more damage than the perfect shot against single targets and also outdamages Nataruk. Aim at the head. It also makes Demolus killing easier than Nataruk, since you can use full charge shot instead of trying to repeatedly nail the perfect shot window on Nataruk, as well as the full charge Nataruk shot not benefiting from headshot multipliers or hand crits either. Sinta is a purpose-built bow with uses for each of its fire modes and rewards high effort gameplay. This also means it isn't for everyone. Hopefully this sheds the light on the differences between Sinta and Nataru, and you'll be able to pick for yourself on which of the two bows you prefer using instead of having others tell you which to use. Cheers! If this is your first time watching, feel free to leave like or better yet subscribe. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. 79.5% of you are not subscribed. I'm trying my best to get you new information out always as soon as possible, like I've been doing with the Duviri update. Stick around if you want to see interesting memes and builds on a nearly daily basis. You don't want to miss out on any of that, do you? That'll be it for this video. Thank you all for watching and see you all next time.